I'm Andy Nidell. Welcome to another exciting episode of Out of the Ether, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and read your best, most interesting, or most controversial comments about the First World War. So Roy writes, while the bombardment of the two 400 millimeter uh, 1915 guns, nicknamed Lorraine and Alsace, was decisive in the recapture of Duomont and Vaux a week later, this is at Verdun, both Mangin and the Colonel Marshall, who, who planned the whole artillery bombardment, never gave credit to these guns and their crews and even dissed them. Okay, an example came from the 21st of October. During the day, Alsace and Lorraine shot a total of 48 shots at nearly maximum elevation due to strong winds. These winds provoked the smoke of the impacts to fall back towards the French lines, giving the impression that the rounds fell short. Mangin, followed by Marshall, threw a tantrum about the failure of the gunners and that the most serious sanctions should be taken against the ones in charge. It took General Franjat head of the 2nd Army Artillery, and who directly observed the shots from the Fort de Regret, to calm Mangin and to ensure him that the 400 millimeters were directly hitting the fort. An affirmation which was proven from aerial photographs as well as the testimony of the recce pilots. On the 21st of October, out of 48 rounds fired, 34 could be perfectly observed by planes. 28 of them directly hit the fort. One of them completely destroyed an observation casemate. On the 22nd, the Alsace was moved to a new position from which it could fire on Fort Vaux, leaving the Lorraine alone to treat Duaumont. The most important damages came on the 23rd of October. That day, the Lorraine shot 45 rounds. 38 were well observed, with 31 direct hits on the fort, some of which caused important damages. 11.50 a.m., direct hit on the tunnel entrance. 12.30 p.m., a tunnel used by the Germans as an infirmary is hit, 50 dead among the wounded and medics. 1.15 p.m. Heavy explosion. 1.50 p.m. A shell pierced the fort. Heavy smoke coming from the impact. 2.50 p.m. A violent fire erupts from one of the impacts. 3.30 p.m. A shell detonates an ammo depot. On the 24th, despite the heavy fog, the Lorraine shot another 15 rounds, without observation because of the fog. Meanwhile, the Alsace attacked the Fort Vaux with 24 rounds. 11 on the 24th, 13 the next day. At least 9 hit the fort without heavy damage. But, following additional bombings from other heavy guns, the German troops decided to evacuate the fort the 2nd of November. In the end, and despite the results, Mangin completely forgot the two 400mm guns from the post-battle rewards, and he never asked for their support for the remainder of the war. Hopefully other generals saw the value of these guns and used them to great effect. For example, the destruction of the Mont Cornelet tunnels in May 1917. Or even as incentive weapons with the guns firing right in front of attacking troops to motivate them. H. Lynn Keith writes, uh, Kurt Windgens, uh, Leutnant Luftstreitskräfte, 19 kills, awarded Paul La Marit, wore glasses. Uh -huh. Often, uh, men who were considered unfit for infantry or cavalry service were accepted into their country's air service. Mental breakdowns were common among combat pilots. VP Cronin was one of the seven pilots of the 56th Squadron who fought Werner Foss on the day Foss was killed. He suffered a breakdown immediately after that fight and never flew combat again. He was posted to the home establishment and then to training squadrons. A.G. Lee, 46th Squadron, had nightmares that woke him screaming. He was grounded the 1st of January 1918 and posted to the home establishment. Roy Brown, the 209th Squadron, the Canadian credited with killing Manfred von Richthofen, went to hospital nine days after Richthofen's death, where he remained until June. He was then posted to a training squadron. According to reports, at the time of Richthofen's death, Brown lived on a diet of whiskey and soda and nothing else. Brown himself wrote that when he was transferred to the unemployed list, he was a nervous wreck. The British tended to rotate shattered pilots to the home establishment or to training squadrons. The French Aeronautique Militaire did not recognize combat fatigue 
as a debilitating condition and flew men until they were killed. It is likely that cost them several of their aces. The Germans kept pilots flying when they should not be flying. Foss was not rested the day of his last flight. He was hurried back to combat too soon. Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron, needed more rest after he was shot down the 6th of July, 1917. He too was hurried back to combat too soon in August, 1917. The Luftstreichskräfte were always outnumbered and the need for pilots was overwhelming. If you'd like to see our bio special about the Red Baron, you can click right here for that. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.